And we are back here on Sportsline. We're going to switch gears to what everybody was talking about this weekend. The 80th playing of the Masters down in Augusta, Georgia. It looked for all the world like Jordan Spieth would win a second consecutive green jacket. And then he melted down at the 12th hole. The beneficiary of that, 28-year-old Englishman Danny Willett who takes home the green jacket, part of a great 10-day span, and John Burton talked with Virgil Herring all about it. It is a sure sign of spring when we are joined in studio by our good buddy, PGA Teaching Pro and Golf Analyst Virgil Herring. Now, we'll get to what Danny Willett did in just a second, but first, you could see the disappointment on Jordan Spieth's face when he had to hand over the green jacket to Danny Willett. It all started at the end of round three, and it all fell apart today in round four on the 12th hole quadruple bogey. Tell me, Verge, tell them what happened to Jordan Spieth. Well, Jordan Spieth uh, mentioned at the beginning of the week that he was really struggling with his swing, and you just can't win Augusta National with not all of your parts of your game razor sharp. And he got away with one long putt after another. I mean, that putter is amazing. And I was thinking after he birdied four holes in a row, I cannot believe somebody's going to win the Masters with not all of their game together. Sure. But uh, just like it always does, the Augusta National wins and on the 12th <laughs> hole. And the 12th hole has captured many a great champion. Uh, it got Jordan Spieth today. I was really shocked at how far he dropped back on his first drop. Mm -hmm. And then shock set in. You could see he was wiping off his, his right hand almost the rest of the day. Fight or flight, he was, uh, he was in a state of shock. And just like when he tried to hand the, uh, put the jacket on Danny Willett, he nearly <laughs> tripped over himself. Yeah. So he was, uh, it was really hard to watch. It wasn't quite as bad as Greg Norman in 96, mm -hmm. but it was still really hard to watch a great champion and a great player like Jordan Spieth falter like that. Yeah, it looked like we were heading for a Sunday back nine duel between Spieth and Rory McIlroy. I'm sure the networks would have loved that. Uh, how about Roy McIlroy? Did record a single birdie on Saturday. Disappointing effort for him this weekend as well. Yeah, I, I thought, thought that Roy McIlroy, if he could have had a great putting week, there was a really good chance that he was going to wear the, the green jacket. But much like I said, you can't win a green jacket without all parts of your game on point. The putter left him down as, as bad as anybody. And he, he leaves again disappointed and shorthanded for the career grand slam. But I really believe that the, the champion for sure was Danny Willett. No weaknesses, bogey free today, and hats off to Danny Willett because that was a, that's an unbelievable round under that that kind of pressure. That brings me to my next point. Let's give Danny Willett some love. Shot that bogey free 67 today, tied for the lowest round of the weekend. One man's falter obviously is another man's opportunity. He played great, especially on the back nine. So so clutch when he needed it to, and I, th I believe that he knew going on the 16 t that he was going to be he had it and it was his tournament to win and probably played the first three hours thinking that it was going to be you know he's just playing for second place and it's mm -hmm. funny how golf lets you if you don't stay in it the whole time you, you fall asleep you lose your opportunity he fought hard and he hit all kinds of clutch shots great short game complete game and hats off to Denny Willett new father you know he was called his called his wife you know from England yeah you know so I mean imagine all of the things that he's gone through in the last 10 days so I gotta tip my cap to Danny Willett that was an amazing performance now most folks haven't heard of Danny Willett only the second Englishman to win the Masters Nick That's Faldo right. the other does he have the game to compete for major championships in the future absolutely he does he has the length he has the control and he has the short game the interesting piece about Danny Willett is he's much like Jordan Spieth He's not amazing at anything. He's not the longest like McElroy or Dustin Johnson. He doesn't have the great short game like Jordan Spieth. He's just solid all around. And those kind of games last. And many people here don't know him because he's not a full-time PGA Tour player. He plays mostly in Europe. But he's a force to be reckoned with. And at 26, he's a, he's a great player. Incredible finish again to the Masters. How about Danny Willett, his wife giving birth to a child earlier this week. And then he wins the Masters. Virgil Herring, thanks for being here. We look forward to your great golf tips all summer long. Thank you.
All right, thank you very much, John and Virgil. Now we go to the Stanley Cup playoffs. They drop the puck officially around the league tomorrow night. The Predators and Ducks will wait till Friday night, 9.30 Central Time out in Anaheim for game one of that series, game three and four, of course, here in Smashville next week. We'll get to some Predators players and coach reaction coming up, but first, the radio voice of the Nashville Predators, Pete Weber, joins us to break down this first round series. We get set now for the playoffs with the radio voice of the Nashville Predators, Pete Weber. Best time of the year, right, Pete? Without any question. Uh, there is no time of year I enjoy more than this one. It is a great time for sure. We had to wait for the last game of the regular <laughs> season tonight to finally find out the Preds opponent. The Ducks have been the hottest team in hockey the yep. second half of the season. How did the Preds match up against the Pacific champs? Well, one thing, Steve, we can't look at the way they matched up when they first met back at the last meeting was November 17th. This club started out the year 1-7-2. and two. Since then, they've come on like gangbusters. They are first in goals against. They are first in the power play, first in penalty killing. Those last two factors, no team has done that since the 84 New York Islanders. So that is an historical accomplishment to be certain. So this is going to be a real test. And a Ducks team with playoff experience, they gave the Blackhawks quite a run yeah. last year. The Predators have been really good down the stretch in their own right, third best in that time. Pete, what do you attribute this team's turnaround from midseason when they were struggling? I, well, number one, I think they got their defensive zone coverage straightened out. And that happened on the road trip to Western Canada just prior to the All-Star break here. So that straightened things out. Pecorine came on very well because Carter Hutton played two consecutive games. That actually gave him a break. That had never happened when Pekka was right. healthy. And since that point in time, he has been almost unbeatable, a safe percentage of the mid-92s, and an outstanding goals against as well. So if you have that going for you, uh, goaltending obviously makes every coach look brilliant. You bring up Pekka Rene, and he has had, by his standards, an up-and-down season, yep. but trending upward yes. late in the year. What do you expect from him now in a playoff series with all the marbles out there? I think he'll play extraordinarily well. I mean, that's what we expect from him to be certain. Uh, this is a guy who uh, gets into the heads of the opposing players on a fairly regular basis. So playing as he has the last, let's say, two and a half months or so, I think that's going to be a problem for Anaheim. And Anaheim, this, this is the intriguing thing. They've got two goaltenders. Do they have one, you know, as far as the number one is concerned? So, uh, they, obviously, they won the Jennings Trophy for the lowest goals against, so that part has worked. One of the questions for the Predators last year against that very talented Blackhawks team was up the middle in the yeah. center position. The addition of Ryan Johansson, how much better does that allow this Preds team to match up with the, the powerhouse teams like the Ducks? Well, so now you have Ryan Johansson going right away against Ryan Getzloff, or perhaps maybe Ryan Kessler uh, and see how that works out. But it allows the other Predators centermen to play in a role for which perhaps they are better suited. Mike Ribeiro, the number two line. Mike Fisher, the number three line. And then you have Mr. Faceoff, Paul Gostad, taking care of things on the fourth line. Last year, one of the questions was the playoff experience of this team because they yeah. hadn't been in for a couple years. A grueling series last year against the eventual Stanley Cup champions and the Blackhawks. What's the key this year to advancing past round one? I think to advancing past round one, they're going to be very wise. I mentioned that about power play for the Ducks. Stay out of the box if you possibly can. Don't get lured into anything. But the other thing, keep that scoring as balanced as it has been. Uh, to have two 30-goal scorers going into the playoffs and another guy in the 20s, plus Ryan Johansson, who played roughly half a year here, I think is a great situation. Some firepower on this Preds team that I haven't seen in the right. time that I've been covering the team. It's always wide open when you get to the playoffs, Pete, but it seems like this year in hockey, literally any of the 16 teams in the playoffs, if they made a run to the cup, wouldn't shock you. Right, and I think we, we sort of had the lesson taught to us 2006, Edmonton is the eighth seed, they go to the final. And then the LA Kings in 2012. I mean, they are the eighth seed, and the only time it's ever happened, knocked off one, two, and three in order. And, that, and by the way, had a three games to none lead in each of those series. I mean, that was just an incredible happenstance. We'll see if the Predators can be the next team to pull a surprise. It's about time to have a run deep into June here in Nashville. I'm ready for it, if so. Parties at Steve's house. Absolutely. Everybody invited <laughs> if the Preds do it. Pete, thanks so much. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it.